Hey, how you doing? I recently made a video about windowsills, and I was making the case for maybe loading them as a separate family to the window. Uh, generic model, uh, wall-hosted, generic model family. Pros and cons, some say yes, some say no, etc. Okay, but subsequent to that video, somebody asked me, well, what about the window board? How would you add that? Now, I wouldn't add that as a separate family. I don't see any great benefits doing that. There might be a scenario where you would, but generally no. Okay, I would add it to the, the window family itself. Now, I was asked to, to show how to do it. It's relatively straightforward. I should probably make a nest, you know, one that I can load into each window family so I don't have to keep doing it, but no, I'm not going to. I'm just going to make it in one window family and maybe show a few techniques that eh, aren't strictly essential, but, you know, they'll make the, the, the family just that little bit better, I think. Anyway, let's go ahead and get it done. Right, let's go ahead and select this simple window here. Uh, select it and edit family. Now, in the family environment, I'm gonna to wanna to put the uh, window board obviously on the inside, not the outside, okay? Now, it could be confusing here because there is no sill. So I'll just refer to the, this on my floor plan. Uh, I can see that this is outside and this is inside, okay? So let's put some constraints up for the, the window board. Uh, put a reference plane to the left and right so that I can lap the window onto the wall on both sides. And I, I think I might just put a control on that actually so that you can set that lap distance differently for both. Okay, so I'm going to select both these guys, uh, change that scale to, well, to 10 so you can see it, maybe 1 to 5. And select that guy. Now I'm going to change these both to 25, let's say. The same value basically before I apply a parameter so that it'll apply to all the types within the family. Okay, I'm going to give these two dimensions two separate values for the internal window board lapping the wall, you know, beyond the window itself, okay? So that you can bring it in flush in case you have the window butted up against the wall, okay? So I'm going to select this guy, and this gives me the option to create parameter. So select and create parameter. I'm going to call it WB for window board, uh, lap one, let's say. I'm going to make that an instance parameter. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Select that guy. Create parameter. WB lap two. And make that an instance as well. And OK. OK, let's change our view now to the internal face, OK? Uh, elevation. So go to your browser and interior. Right, there she be. Okay, so there's the bottom of our windowsill. We already have the constraint in there for that. Oh, sorry, the window, I should say, not the windowsill. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna use a reference line. Do I have to use a reference line? No, I do not. There's other ways to do this, but this is the way I'm doing it, okay? So go into the Create tab. I'm gonna make sure, it should be, but I'm gonna make sure that the plane we're working on here is the uh, reference, sorry, is the interior face. So I'm gonna set, set work plane, uh, it's in interior. That's the name of that reference plane for the internal face of the wall. That's fine. Okay. So you're going to create a reference line, not a reference plane. The reasons will become apparent in a moment. Select, and I'm just going to draw it across, like so, anywhere there. And what I'm going to do is align and lock to those. See that reference plane there and that one there? Those are the reference planes that we just created left and right for the windows, uh, the window board lap. Okay. I'm going to constrain my reference line, the ends of it, to those reference planes. So I'll select my Align tool in the Modify tab. Uh, with Lock pre-selected, I'm going to select that reference plane, then select the end, you get a little blue bubble, the end of the reference line. Boom. I'm going to do the same on the other side, select the reference plane, and the end of the reference line. Boom. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the Dimension tool, and I'm going to dimension off of the bottom plane there. That's the bottom of the window from there to the reference line. And this will be the thickness of our window board. Okay. So escape, escape, select the dimension. Parameter, create parameter appears as an option. Select it. And we'll say window board WB thickness. Okay. 
OK. You can leave that as a type and OK. Right, let's go back into our reference level, our plan. OK, now we're going to create an extrusion for the window board, but I need to constrain it to the inside face of the window frame. And in this window family that I made, for whatever reason, I don't have the reference plane there for, for the depth of the, the window frame. So now I have a, a parameter for the depth of the window frame, but I don't have a reference plane. So what I'm going to do, I could do one or two things. I could dimension off this and then apply the parameter, or I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create the reference plane. So create a tab and reference plane and select reference plane. Just I'm going to draw it short like that. Escape, escape, dimension from the plane, which is the front of my window to this one. Uh, escape, escape, select the dimension and apply the frame depth parameter. Now, that's not going to be the same name of parameter on your window. So find whatever the depth of the window is, the window frame, uh, or, or you might have to create a parameter. Uh, okay, frame depth, 150. Okay. Now I can constrain my uh, extrusion to that guy. Okay. All right. We go to our uh, create tab. Use the extrusion tool. Okay. I'm going to just make a very simple extrusion, just a rectangle. Okay. I could do this by picking re reference planes or, or rectangle or different ways. But I'm going to draw the rectangle and then constrain it in. Okay. Like so. Then pick my align tool. Select with lock pre selected. I'm going to pick the side of the window reference plane, not the window uh, board lap plane that we created. And I'll explain why in a moment. I'm going to select the other side and pick and lock. Uh, select the reference plane here behind the window, pick and lock, and tab to select the reference plane on the face of the wall. Okay, not the wall. The, the, there's a reference plane there, or there should be. Tab to select it, I'll align to it, okay, and lock. And shin A, select yes, tick. Uh, while it's still selected, let's just give it a material, okay? So in the properties over here, the instance properties, we have the material associate parameter, little gray buttony thing. Click that, and I think I already have one. You'd, you'd select new, uh, escape, but I, I, I'm just going to use my, uh, where is it, window board material. Okay, but if you were creating one, you click here, uh, type in the name, and okay. Okay, so window board material. Okay. Okay, let's go to our interior elevation again. Interior, and uh, there's our extrusion. It's down there at the bottom of the floor. Okay, so I'm going to select it and pull up the grab handle to our reference line up there drop it on it and lock i'm going to do the same i'm going to drag it up to the bottom of the window reference plane it's not finding it i don't want to lock it to the window frame so i'm just going to align and lock so I'll use my align tool in the modify tab align to the bottom reference plane select and locked because i had lock pre-selected okay excellent now i can go ahead and change that thickness to let's say i don't know what, what do you want 20 20 mil maybe let's look at that in 3d there it is there, okay? So we have our window board uh, constrained inside the, the wall opening. And we would, what we want to do next is we want to get that lap on the on the internal face of the wall uh, and be able to control that, which we already set up the, the controls for, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do then is create a sweep along the path of the reference plane. Sorry, the reference line. That's important. Uh, and I'm just going to use the an arc and half circle basically. You could bring that out further if you wanted to. Uh, but let's go ahead and first create a, a a profile for the sweep. Okay, so file, new, family, and I'm scroll down to metric profile. And I think I'll use metric profile hosted. Open. I'm going to create two dimensions. Sorry, two parameters. Okay, so up here in our family types, select. I'm going to create two parameters down here, okay? So first, I'm going to call the first one diameter. All right. And the second new parameter, I'm going to call radius. Okay. And in the formula tab, I'm going to enter equals is already there. So equals diameter, the diameter parameter divided by that's forward slash two enter so radius is the diameter halved okay so if i put a diameter of 20 in our radius is 10. okay and okay okay in the create tab uh, select line 
and of our uh, line types, go down to start end radius arc. Okay, select. I'm going to draw a big arc so you can see it nice and clear. Click and pull out to half circle. It'll it'll snap to it. I click again. Escape, escape. You're going to select that arc, and in the properties, there's a center mark visible option. I'm going to click. Uh, yes, check that on. And now I can align and lock and dimension off that center mark. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to just pull this below the horizontal plane. Okay, I'm going to dimension from the horizontal plane to the center mark. Okay, escape, escape. I'm going to select that dimension and apply the radius parameter there. Okay, escape, escape. Then I'm going to align in the modify tab, tab to the vertical uh, reference plane and pick the center mark. That's locked. Next thing I want to do is I want to apply the radius parameter to this arc. Okay, now maybe the simplest way to do that is just to select the arc. You get a temporary dimension appears. If you click on the little dimension symbol below it, that becomes a permanent dimension. Uh, deselect everything, then select the dimension and associate parameter radius. Okay, now if it's, it's all blocked out because of the size of the text, let me just change that to one to one. Okay, now that brings us nicely so that this insertion point, which would be the top of the window board, has our arc constrained nicely to it. Okay, now the other thing I need to do then is to apply a back, a straight line, a vertical line to that. So create line. I'm just going to pick line with lock selected. Whoops, there it is, selected now. And pick the reference plane. And then I'm going to trim to corners. Pick the arc, pick the line, pick the arc, pick the line. That's done. Okay, that's the dimension line. Now, that's done. You should save that. I'm not going to. I'm just going to load it in. But you should save it just so you can have it for again, okay? So load into project and close. Uh, sample house. No, not the house. The deep frame window. Okay. Uh, no. And we're in. Okay. In a 3D view, we can see our reference line there. Okay. Go to the Create tab. Select Sweep because we are creating a sweep. And Pick Path. Not Sketch Path. Pick Path. Okay. Pick 3D edges. Then you can pick your reference line. Okay. Pick it. And OK. Now we select profile. We pick the profile we just loaded in uh, by sketch family two. And it's coming a bit wonky ways. Oh, let me see. So if I rotate that minus 90 degrees or 270 and then flip, it's on the right side now. And OK. And while it's still selected, I'm going to apply the material parameter here, associate family parameter to the window board material. OK. I'm going to, in the Modify tab, Join Geometry, join that to the board, and that line. You can hide that if you want to have a look at it. See, it's behaving as you would expect. Okay. Now, we can do all sorts of things with that now. We can we can reduce the, the lap to zero on either side or any number you want, if you're butting up against a wall or whatever. Uh, or you could change, you know, you could do a different shape for that profile. If you wanted to come out square and then... Uh, use the arc, you could do that, okay? That's up to you. So next we load it in, okay? Before we load that in, actually, I just spotted something. Our arc is, if you change the type of the window, our arc is a different depth in the window board, and that's because I haven't actually associated the parameter for the arc uh, radius, okay? So I need to go down in my families here, in the, in, in the family, to profiles, and it was family two, select the drop down, family two, uh, open it. There it is. So radius or sorry, diameter should equal the window board thickness parameter. Okay. So associate parameter, uh, window board thickness. Okay. And okay. Perfect. And then we will load it into the project and close. Uh, I'm not going to save it. You should. Okay. Definitely. You should uh, load it and close override existing. That's fine. Now, if I select the window, once that's loaded, and use my 3D section box, selection box thing there, click it, rotate it around, you'll see the window board sitting nicely there, as we like it. And if you wanted to, you could change the, the lap of the window board on either side. 
as you please. All right. One other thing I forgot. I forgot to give it a visibility control. Okay, so we can turn it on and off. So let's go back in and edit the family. Select the family and edit family. So there's two elements there. There's the sweep and there's the extrusion. So rotate and find the two of those guys. There's the extrusion. Press control and select the sweep. Okay, so I have the two of them selected now. And in the properties here, visible, we have an associate parameter button. Click that and select new parameter and we'll call it window board wb visibility something and where will we put it we put it into the visibility box fine do you want it to be type or instance i think probably instance okay and okay and okay load back into the project and close and once again you should save it but i will not All right, existing and uh, version, perfect. There it is. So if I select the window board, I can turn it off here in instance parameters if I want to. Apply. Gone. Good. Perfect. Brilliant. Fantastic. Well, I hope you found that useful. Thanks for choosing TGAT Revit. The channel where Revit is always riveting. <laughs> uh, look, I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you did, like, comment, share. If you haven't already. If you haven't already. Please subscribe. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.